Welcome to the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization here in Göttingen. Um, as you see behind me is the Max Planck Institute and also the Experimental Hall. In the Experimental Hall we have the Göttingen Turbulence Facility. The trick of that facility is to use compressed sulfur hexafluoride at high pressures to get high Rayleigh and Reynolds numbers. So these are the storage tanks. Over here we have uh, five of them and these storage tanks currently we have the 12 ton sulfur hexafluoride. As you will see inside we don't have any gas right now in use as the experiment is apart. And then over here we have the liquefier. So this is the liquefaction unit. In that unit we can pump the SF6 out of the tunnel. Um, on the other side we have the big wind tunnel and also the U-boat. And in both of them we can decrease the pressure to one millibar and therefore we have very, very little gas left when we are done with the experiment. We are now inside the experimental hall over here. Here we see the U-boat. It's the blue pressure vessel over here. It's uh, 2.5 meters in diameter. It's five meters long. And it has a four meter turret, which you will see in a moment. In here we house the convection experiment. And of course when the door is closed, then we can pressurize this vessel up to very high pressures. And all the details will now be described to you by Zhao Zhou Hehe, who is the first author of our paper. And he will now tell you the details of the experiment. So this is a dorm of the U-boat. We use a crane to put the sail in. And after that, we seal the dorm uh, with the screws. Now I'm standing inside the U-boat. This is a convection cell with a spec ratio equal to 1. We connect the water pipe and the cables outside of the U-boat so, uh, and we run the experiment remotely. Now the cell has been packed up and I will use pictures to show the construction details. We use the two convection cells in the experiment. They have a spec ratio equal to 1 and 1 half. The metal plate has a mirror finish. On the back side of the bottom plate, we glued heaters to provide uniform heat flux. For the top plate, there is a cooling water channel on the back side. We use the circulating water to maintain a constant temperature. Close to the top and the bottom plates, we installed several thermal shields with constant temperature. We also used a large thermal shield to cover the sidewall. Temperature on each of them was regulated individually, and the resolution is 10 mK. By this means, the convection flow inside of the cell is completely insulated from the surrounding temperature fluctuations. After assembled, we put the two convection cells into the U-boat and measured the normalized heat flux, namely the nozzle number as a different radiant number, at the same time. The results for the expect ratio 1 cell are shown in color. We can see there is a transition at radiant number around 2 times 10 to the 13. After this transition, the nozzle number behaves similar to that was found in the expect ratio one half cell, the black symbols. We interpret this observation as the onset of the transition to the ultimate state of Rayleigh Bernard convection. Our results also suggest that the ultimate state transition is universal and independent of the spec ratio.